About a year ago, Dallas Maverick fans were about on top of the world and for pretty good reason. Not only did they upset their hated rival the Phoenix Suns in embarrassing fashion by blowing them out at home in Game 7, they talked so much trash they got their subreddit locked. Yeah, it was that bad. And even though they lost 4-1 to Golden State in the Western Conference Finals, a lot of fans really didn't mind. They had overachieved a lot that season and set up a foundation for an even more incredible next one. A lot of people, me including, believe that Luka Doncic would win his first of many MVPs this year, and he almost proved me right. He actually put up a stat line only Michael Jordan has replicated and probably would have won the MVP if his team actually made the playoffs. Yeah, if you don't know, the Dallas Mavericks have been eliminated from playoff contention in what has been an embarrassing and unbelievably disappointing season for the franchise. Now, a lot of finger pointing is going on, and I know people want to say Kyrie is the real problem, but I actually think he's being used as the scapegoat this time. For once, he might not actually be the culprit. And what I think the real problem is, is a lot bigger than many people realize. Well, I'm sure Mavericks fans are you too, but it's pretty bad. The situation in Dallas has gotten even worse and it might actually even end with Luka Doncic leaving in 2024. So let's talk about it. Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy 2KJ here and today I wanna dive a bit deeper on what exactly is going on with the Dallas Mavericks and how it got this bad. They just made the Western Conference Finals last year and now they didn't even make the play-in. As always, if you like the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's get right into it. So there's a lot of ground to cover here, but let's talk about the first domino to fall for the Mavs this season, and that would be Jalen Brunson. Brunson was coming off a fantastic performance in the 2022 playoffs, where he averaged 21.6 points per game, 3.7 assists, and 4.6 rebounds, all on 47% shooting. And he even showed he was more than capable of being the number one option, with Luka missing the first three games of the first round. Obviously looking for a much bigger payday this year and being very important to the Mavs' success, you would think that Mark Cuban would have done anything necessary to retain him. However, he didn't do that. And he ended up leaving to go play for the Knicks for nothing, where he has had an unreal season so far, helping take the Knicks back to the playoffs as the 5 seed and averaging 24 points per game, 6.2 assists, and 3.5 rebounds on 49% from the field and 42 from the 3. This was a huge blow to the Mavs, as it was pretty obvious early on how the lack of scoring besides Luka was getting pretty concerning. Their team at this point is now basically just Doncic, and they needed to make a play for another scorer, so that's exactly what they did. They traded for Kyrie Irving, and you would think this would be the second domino to fall in the downfall of the Mavs, but it's actually the third. There was another major problem from Dallas that had been going on all season, and that was defense. Now, the Dallas Mavericks were a very good defensive team last year posting a defensive rating of 109.4, which was 6th in the league, and holding teams to the second lowest total of points per game in the NBA at 104.7. So it's pretty safe to say the Mavericks last year had one of the best defenses in the whole league, and this year it's the exact opposite. From the beginning of the season until February 6th, which is when they traded for Kyrie, their defensive rating was 116.3, putting them at a blistering 24th in the league, and in comparison, the Cleveland Cavaliers had the best in that span at 110.9, which is a pretty staggering difference. So their defense was pretty terrible already, and instead of doing anything really to make it better, Cuban decides to trade one of his better defensive players away for instant offense. After the trade, the Mavericks points per game actually did go up a bit, even though it's a small sample size, from 112.5 to 117.7, which is a nice boost. However, their defensive rating absolutely tanked to 119.8 points per game, which is unbelievably bad, and all but shows that this was probably one of the worst moves a team could make. They were already struggling with defense and fielding two of the worst defenders in the entire league in Tim Hardaway Jr. and Reggie Bullock. And trading away Dorian Finney-Smith, one of their better defensive players, probably didn't help very much either. Very interestingly, they are still 24th in the league at the span, which is pretty funny. And as a matter of fact, the Kings have actually had a worse defensive rating over that time with a rating of 120.6, which is also pretty bad. 
Anyway, with one more game of the season for the Mavs, they currently stand with the number 23 spot in defensive rating at 116.6 and 15th in opponents' points per game at 113.9. In addition to having huge questions about bringing solid defenders in the offseason, they also need to be looking at bringing in a better coach. Jason Kidd was a solid player, but he's terrible as the captain of this team. I don't think I need to get into too much detail why, I'm sure you've seen the horrific lineups he's been throwing out there on a nightly basis, and even in Milwaukee. The second he left, it's like they blossomed into a significantly better team, even winning a championship. This might just be a pipe dream though, with Mark Cuban going on record to say that Kidd will absolutely stay as the head coach, even with his poor season. And that's the other part of the problem. Mark Cuban has done nothing to help one of the premier players in the NBA seriously contend to win a championship. Instead of re-signing his second option, who had one of the lowest defensive ratings in the league for a guard in 2022, he decides to let him walk for nothing. This is still the same team having to pay for the Porzingis trade, by the way. Even worse, after probably realizing that his team was one of the worst defensive teams in the league, he decides to trade for less defense. The blatant disrespect and not fixing the holes in your team for your superstar is insane. And if they can't retain Irving or get some better defenders, I 100% expect Luka to ask out and request a trade very similar to LeBron in his first day in Cleveland. And if he does, it'll solely be the fault of the upper management of the Dallas Mavericks for completely failing him, the team, and the fans. So what do you guys think about the Mavs season? I think it's been a pretty disappointing one. I mean, I'm not a Mavericks fan, but I do think it's insane that Luka Doncic's career is being pretty much wasted here with the upper management literally not doing anything at all to try and give him a reasonable team. Like trading for Kyrie was good if they already had a really good defensive team, but their defense was really, really bad this year and it just made it a lot worse. So if they can get better defenders this year, maybe get some better 3 and D guys, I can see them be good next year, but I don't think they have the cap space for all that. Either way, if you like the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!